let's start with a uh, God for his uh, faithfulness throughout this week. Uh, thank you for being with me at my workplace, at home, at school.
love others. Uh, as I pray for the Barnabas group, uh, God has put in my heart uh, that we should uh, serve others. Uh, we should love others. Uh, we should start from this church. Uh, we're a body of this church. Uh, we should love. Uh, we should uh, associate. We should uh, befriend uh, others in this church. And uh, I want us to, in the coming weeks, think about how we can serve uh, uh, our body, uh, how we can serve our fellow brothers and sisters in this church. Uh, we need to not just worship them, we need, not, uh, we need to not just uh, study the Bible, but we need to love others and serve others. So I want you to pray and uh, I want us to think of uh, one way we can serve others. And I want us to serve others uh, in this church. So next song is, uh, This is My Desire. So we want to honor God, worship God by uh, serving others. Okay?
us out of this world uh, to come today to worship you, Lord. Uh, Father, thank you for accepting our worship. Lord, bless us during this time. Help us to hear your word. Open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts to hear your word. Lord, um, the only thing we can rely on is your power. Your word is your, is your power and your Holy Spirit. Lord, transform us, uh, change us, Lord, according to your word and speak to us. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's open to Malachi uh, chapter 4, verse uh, 1 through 6. Well, today is the last uh, passage of Malachi. So we've been uh, at Malachi for two months. Okay, Malachi chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. And then our next book will be 1 John. Okay, so it's a book about love. Love. Okay, loving others. Okay. Uh, Next, uh, this coming week, I have to go, uh, I have to attend a preaching uh, conference, and I have to read about uh, 12 paper, uh, 15 papers. And one of the paper is the trend in the church for the last 20, 10 to 20 years is uh, everyone is flocking to the uh, mega churches, big churches, and no one is coming to the uh, small churches. Uh, so everyone wants to go to a big church where there is comfort. Uh, they can hide in the big church. Uh, they don't have to do anything, right? Uh, so that's the uh, big problem today. No matter how good the preaching is, no matter how good the worship is, uh, people don't want to go small church. They want to go to big church. They can hide. They don't have to do anything. But uh, for uh, the God's kingdom to grow, uh, we need a lot of churches. Not just um, even if you look at businesses. Small uh, uh, stores are closing down, and the e marts and the Lotte marts are all taking over, right? And that's uh, and what it, what happens? Only a, a few are rich, and the rest are poor. Mm -hmm. So the churches are going through the same trend. It's been going on for 10, 20 uh, years. So the English ministry, everyone's going to Sarangai Gre, everyone's going to Onuri Gre, everyone's going to Bigna. But it's very important that there are a lot of uh, churches. Uh, uh, so. Uh, I'm sure that all of you here uh, know the importance of uh, small churches and, and uh, it's not easy being part of a small church, right? You want to be with a uh, lot of other people, you want to meet new people, uh, you want to uh, you know, play it safe, but if you're a small church, you have to work hard. Uh, I, I give each of you a role, right? So it might be burdensome, but that's the only way we can grow um, ourselves and that's the only way we can uh, grow God's uh, kingdom. So I was reading one of the papers and uh, that was what it was about. Okay. Right, so Malachi chapter 4, verse 1 through uh, 6. So can we read it in one voice? Ready, go. Surely in the day is coming, it will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stolen. And that day that is coming will set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its wings, and you will go out and meet like calves released from the straw. Then you will trample down the wicked, they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I do these things, says the Lord Almighty. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the decrees and laws I gave him and for, for all Israel. See, I will send you the prophet Elisha, before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. You will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, or else I will come and strike the land with a curse. So today is the last passage of Malachi and the last passage of the Old Testament. So I've been teaching Bible in my school for, uh, this is my third year. Uh, this year I changed it a little bit. Instead of just teaching, uh, we do praise uh, twice a week, and then another thing is, every other Friday, I take out my students outside of school and we clean uh, the community. Uh, so we've, been, uh, we've done it twice so far. So we buy the uh, uh, plastic bags, garbage bags with our own money. We buy the gloves and then we pick up rubbish. So I want to teach them uh, to serve, uh, to love others, to serve the community. So we're doing that. So we do it every Friday. So on Thursday night, uh, I go out my cell phone. I check the weather because if the weather is bad, we can't go out. 
Uh, so uh, I check the weather, and then sometimes it tells me it's sunny the next day, and then it ends up being cloudy, and then it's, uh, it drizzles. And sometimes it, on Thursday it tells me uh, the weather is going to be bad, but it ends up the weather is, being, uh, is good. Yeah. It's, it's pretty clear. So uh, although I trust the weather, uh, I, I don't completely uh, trust the weather. I'm not sure if the rain will come. I'm not sure if the sun will come. So I always make sure I have a backup plan for that uh, day. So we're not sure about these things. But in our passage today, there is something that will surely uh, come. So my title today is, Surely uh, the Day is Coming. So let's look at our passage today. Uh, we're unsure if th these things will happen or not, but there is one thing uh, that our passage tells us, surely this will come. And what is the first phrase here? Surely the day is coming. Surely the day is coming. Uh, so the author is saying, um, for sure, it is for sure that this day is coming. What day is coming? What day is coming? Chapter 3, it talked about the day is coming. This, uh, in chapter 3, it talked about Jesus' first coming. Right? But this one is about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Surely the day will come when Jesus comes again. 2,000 years ago, Jesus came. He came, he died on the cross, he was buried, he resurrected, and he ascended into heaven. Right? But now, he will, at a day, at a time we don't know, not even the angels, not even the sun, but only the time that the Father knows, Jesus will come back. Surely, the day is coming back when Jesus will come back again. Do you believe this? Surely, the day is coming back. The first day, uh, the, in Noah's time, God judged the world through what? Water. But this time, what does it say? Surely, the day is coming, Jesus is coming back. And what will happen? We read on. It will burn like a furnace. So the first judgment was with water, but the second judgment is with fire. Not just any fire, but what? A hot, intense heat, a furnace is going to come. And what do we see? The furnace, the fire is for who? All the arrogant and every evildoer. That furnace is for every, all arrogant and every doer. So not even one person, not even one arrogant, not even one evildoer will escape God's punishment, the furnace. So are you, when Jesus comes back, uh, are you, will you face this judgment? Are you the arrogant, the evildoer? Right? So it says right here, there will be like stubble. What is a stubble? What is a stubble? Do you know? It's a part of a grain. It's a part of a grain. When you put in fire, uh, it burns really quick uh, compared to the other parts of, of the uh, grain. So all arrogant and every evildoer will be what? Stubble. Jesus will come back, there will be a judgment by fire, <coughs> and they what? They will last just a split second. That's what will happen uh, to them. And what? And that day that is coming will set them on fire. Okay? And uh, what does it say? The Lord says the Lord Almighty, not a root or a branch will be left to them. Right? So when, uh, when the winter comes, what happens to the trees? Uh, during the fall, the leaves fall away, right? But, well, uh, so the tree looks dead. But what? If the root remains, the tree is what? Still alive. In the spring, uh, the flowers will bloom again, right? So tree, even though when you cut a tree, even though there's no flower, even though there's no branches, even though there's nothing on the uh, tree, if the root remains, it is still alive. At some point in time, uh, the branches will grow, uh, the flowers will bloom again, right? But what will happen to the evildoers? Not a root or a branch will be left to them. So the evildoer, when Jesus comes back, they will not survive the fire, right? But we see later in the New Testament that everyone will live eternally, right? Everyone live eternally in heaven or in hell. So what will happen in uh, hell? There will be an eternal fire. You will have eyes, you will have ears, you will have nose, you will have what? So you'll be burning in fire, you want to die, but you can't die. You'll be screaming, wanting to die, but you can't die. So it'll be a physical pain, and it will be what? Emotional uh, pain. So that's what hell is. So in, in the New Testament, who goes to hell? Lazarus goes to hell, 
right? And he's so thirsty that he asked that uh, a drop of water would be put on his uh, tongue, right? So all arrogant and evil doer, when Jesus comes back, what will they will face that we put in the furnace, right? Surely the day is coming when this will happen. But verse 2, let's read that together. But, let's read it. Here we go. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in his wings, and you will go out and lead like calves released from the stall. Right? But for those who revere my name, for those who fear me, for those who obey me, what furnace is not their destiny, they will not be like stubble, they will not be like uh, a person without a root, what would they be? But for you who revere, who obey me, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing. Mm -hmm. Who is the Son of Righteousness? Who is the Son of Righteousness? Jesus. It's referring to Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the Son. He is the light of the world. He is the source of life. Mm -hmm. So Revelation, uh, let's go down. Revelation 20, 22 5 says about Jesus. Okay, let's read that together. There will be no more light. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord of God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. So in heaven, God is light. There is no need of light. There will be no darkness, for God will shine light. So what? For those who obey me, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its wing. So Jesus will come back in that day, right? For those who obey him, for those who honor him, he will come to what? Amen. And he will wipe away Amen. all of our tears. There will be no more death, mourning, crying, or pain. Right now, the world is unfair. The wicked is prospering. But when Jesus comes back, they will, for, uh, they will experience the furnace. Right now, the righteous is suffering. But what? Jesus will come. The Son of Righteousness will come with healing. And he will wipe away every tear from our eyes. There will be no crying, no pain, right? We experience this as we believe in Jesus, but when he comes back, there will be none like this. And we read on, and you will go out and leap like calves, um, where is it here? Calves released from the stall. Right? Have, you, have you ever seen calves in a stall, right? At night, the owner puts the calves in the small stall and they're tied, tied there, right? So they cannot move around right, at night. And then what do they do? They wait for the sun to come up, and the owner takes, um, unties them, takes them out in the, in the wide pasture. And what do they do? They're finally free, and they run uh, with freedom, with joy around that uh, wide uh, pasture. So we are like, in this world, we're suffering, we're tied up in the stall, but we can't move, we have no freedom, but what? Uh, it's dark, but when the Son of Righteousness comes, what happened? He will free us, and we will what? Run around that white pasture, and we will be leaping with joy. So that's the destiny of those who fear God. Verse 3, let's read it on. Ready? Then you will trample down the wicked. There will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I do these things, says the Lord Almighty. Right? At that day, what will we do? We will step on. We will be victorious over uh, the wicked and there will be ashes under our soul. So surely the day is coming when the wicked will be punished through furnace. Surely the day is coming when those who revere God, who obey God, who honor God till the end will experience Him through the Son of Righteousness. So when Jesus comes, which destiny are you headed for? Uh, last week, I told my students to interview uh, five people. Uh, you know, it could be family, friends. Uh, how can we be saved, right? And then most of the answer was uh, go to church, right? uh, pray, which is uh, not very right, right. Well, the correct answer was you believe in Jesus and you'll be saved. But there was one answer that was very interesting. The way you can be saved is wait patiently and faithfully until Jesus comes back. And I thought, wow. That's a better de definition of faith, mm -hmm. right? So faith is what? Waiting patiently and faithfully until Jesus comes back, right? So how are we saved? Yes, we believe in Jesus, 
by uh, uh, confessing that Jesus is our God, right? But many people, what do they do? Uh, they, they are faithful for one year or two years, and then they lose their faith. So what is faith? Uh, being faithful until Jesus uh, comes back, right? Many people lose their faith before that day comes back. So verse 4, what does God tell us to do until that day comes? Surely that day comes. Let's read verse 4. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb for all Israel. So what are we to do until that day comes? We are to remember God's law and we are to obey God's law. We are not to lose faith because the wicked are prospering and then the faithful are suffering. We are to what? Continue to obey God until He comes. Right? Faith is being faithful to the end until He comes back. Do you guys remember Noah? Noah? How many years did it take to build the ark? How many years do you think? So, huh? <laughs> so, uh, so he started building the ark at age of uh, age 500, and uh, the the flood came at the age of 600. So uh, around 100 years it took him uh, to build uh, the ark. But uh, think with me uh, for a moment. It's not one year, two year, not even 10 year, but he gave. 100 year building an ark. Uh, he spent all his money, resources, energy. He built an ark in the middle of, of the desert. Some say it never rained in that area. And he's building an ark. And all the people around him are saying, you're foolish, you're stupid. You're, you're building a boat in the middle of the desert and you're spending 100 years. You're, you're using all your family to do this. So after one year, and all these temptations, Noah probably wanted to quit. And what did he think about? Surely the day is coming when God would punish the world with flood. And each time he had the temptation to quit, each time he thought about the foolishness of building the ark, what did he remind himself? Surely God would send a judgment through water. So what is it that God wants us to do? As we live this life, it seems foolish, right? that Jesus will come back again. It sounds foolish to serve God, but what are we to do? Like Noah, we are to, as Pastor Lee preached, right? We are to keep guard of our heart and our mind. And we need to keep reminding ourselves what? Surely the day is coming when Jesus will come back and punish the world with fire, right? And what, we, what should we do? Remind ourselves and like Noah, obey God. One year, two year, 10 years, 100 years, no matter how long it takes, we need to be faithful and remember and obey God. So, and then verse 5 and 6. What is a sign that Jesus will come back? What is a sign? Something will happen before Jesus comes back. Uh, let's read that together. Okay? Verse 5. Let's read verse 5. See, I will send you the prophet Elijah before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. Do you remember in chapter 3, before Jesus comes the first time, he sends Someone to prepare that way. Who was that person? John, John the Baptist. John the, John the Baptist prepared the way before Jesus came the first time. And then when Jesus comes back the second time, God will send another person to prepare the way. It's not John the Baptist. It's Elijah the prophet. Who is Elijah the prophet? If you look at the Old Testament, uh, he was a faithful prophet who turned the Israelites' heart away from the false god uh, and in, uh, to, towards uh, Israel. At that time, all his, most of Israel, 95% uh, were worshipping the false god of um, Baal. <laughs> so uh, what does Elijah the prophet do? The prophet, he risked his life to bring revival, to bring them back to the living God. So when Jesus comes, before Jesus comes back the second time, God will send Elijah the prophet and what will he do? He will bring revival just as he brought revival uh, in the Old Testament time. So let's see what kind of revival he does. Let's look at verse 6. Let's read that together. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers or else I will come and strike the land with a curse. So before Jesus comes back again, Elijah the prophet will come and he will bring harmony between children and father 
and father and children. And what does this mean? If you look at Ephesians chapter 2, uh, what will happen? Before there is uh, harmony between uh, relationships, there is first harmony with God. So, you know, they talk about the cross, right? If we have a relationship with God, uh, then we have a good relationship with others. So what Elijah the prophet is doing is what? First, he's going to bring everyone back to God, and then there's going to be reconciliation, uh, there's going to be harmony between relationships. So there are a lot of broken relationships today among families, among friends, among co-workers, and the uh, biggest reason is what? They don't have a relationship with God. So each, if each one of us has a good relationship with God, uh, then we will be one in Christ. Uh, there will be a good relationship. So Elijah will bring revival, bring them back to God, and bring them back to uh, each other. Surely the day will come when God will send Elijah the prophet and Jesus will come back. Uh, do you know the story of the boy who cried wolf? Do you guys know that story? Uh, there was a shepherd boy uh, who took care of sheep a uh, little bit close near the village. Uh, so every day he would take care of the sheep, but he was bored. So what, he decided to play trick on the villagers. So he uh, ran to the village and he yelled, wolf, wolf, wolf. And then the farmers, uh, they wanted to help this boy. So they uh, took their uh, pitchfork, they brought their weapons and ran to uh, where all his sheep were. And they ran, they ran, they ran quickly. They were out of breath, they were sweaty. And then the boy saw them running and, 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 it, and didn't see any wolf. And then the boy started to laugh and, uh, and, and they got angry and the villagers went back. And then he decided to, he was bored again, so he decided to do the same trick. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And the people thought, hey, this time this boy must be telling the truth. And again, they ran to the sheep. They were sweating, they were out of breath, they brought their weapon. And again, he was playing a trick. And the boy was laughing, <laughs> laughing. And then he did it a third and a fourth time. And then one day, the boy was just sitting around bored, and really a wolf appeared. So he ran to the village, he cried, wolf, wolf, wolf. And then the people thought, hey, this boy is playing a trick again. And they didn't trust him. The boy lost uh, credibility. Why? Because he lied. He didn't tell uh, the truth. But we have God who has credibility. Why? Because we see throughout the Bible, he has never told a lie. He told uh, Abraham, and Sarah, when they were past the age of bearing, what? That you will have a son. And 25 years later, God kept his promise. God is, has credibility. He told Isaac, when Isaac left his home, I will be with you, I will protect you, and I will bring you back to this land. What did God do? God protected him from his uncle Laban. God protected him from his brother Esau, who was about to kill him. And God keeps all his promise that we see in the Bible. God tells Israel when they're in the wilderness, I will give you the land of Jericho, right? For six days, uh, you go around the city one time. And on the seventh day, uh, you go around seven times. And then the Israelites obeyed. And what did God do? God kept his promise. God gave them the land of Jericho. In the Old Testament, over and over, God promised Israel, I will send a Savior, I will send a Messiah uh, to the Israelites. And 2,000 years ago, God kept his promise. And the only promise he has yet to fulfill is a promise to send Jesus again. And we are unlike the shepherd boy who lost his credibility, God has credibility and we can trust that what, when he says, surely the day is coming, uh, the day is coming. So when the day comes, uh, which destiny are you headed for? Which destiny are you headed for? Are you headed are you the wicked, the arrogant, who experience the furnace? Or are you the one who revere his name? Are you, will you be faithful? God, uh, you cannot tell God, God, I was faithful in the beginning, right? We cannot tell him about the past. He will ask you, were you faithful uh, till the end? So as we close this book, I pray, right? We talked about many things, about worship, about tithe, about loving others, uh, serving others. So I pray that surely this day will come, right? Be like Noah, uh, as Pastor Lee says, guard our hearts, our minds, and keep reminding ourselves. Uh, I remember 
집사님 in Hawaii. I remember I told, she told me the most faithful Christian is those who remind themselves that this world is temporary and that Jesus will come back any day. Uh, so we must always live today, uh, remind ourselves, surely the day is coming, surely the day is coming. And like Noah, be faithful. What does God want us to do? Be faithful uh, to the end. Amen. All right, so let's uh, take this time uh, to pray.
until the day we come. Father, thank you. I just want to pray.